Nityanandam, with auspicious Nityanandam, the gratitude to my Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda Swami, or Swamiji, I welcome you to this video today, where I share from my exp personal experience <clears throat> on one definition Swamiji has given to the word sannyas, or sannyasi. Uh, just for those of you who are watching my videos for the first time, I'm a Purna Sanyasi of the Nityananda Sampradaya or Nityananda order. And a Sanyasi, in Western terms, most closely fitting would be like a Hindu monk. Someone who has devoted their life, lifestyle, purpose in life to achieving enlightenment, which is the purpose of every human being's birth, and sharing the tools, techniques, and sciences, which is um, which are gifts from the Hindu tradition, Hindu religion, with the rest of the world, helping more and more people know that enlightenment is possible, know their higher potential, and sharing Swamiji's teachings with the rest of the world so that they can also seek and achieve the same. Now, Swamiji has talk, talked about sannyas, and I have a playlist which you can check out to see how he describes sannyas. It's a very, obviously it's a very deep and meaningful path. And all of the sannyasis who are, are part of our, our mission, they came from all backgrounds. And they left, quote unquote, great jobs or you know, future potential, sort of family life, relationships, uh, the, the pursuit of money or acquiring, acquiring wealth for personal use or gain or so many things that <clears throat> we seek in the outer world. A sannyasi has declared that this is not what they want to pursue. They want to pursue something that raises their consciousness and takes them to the next level spiritually and ultimately towards enlightenment. So it's a huge lifestyle change. So when Swamiji made the statement once, I don't know if it was a satsang, I may not be saying it exactly, I'm paraphrasing. Um, he said, a sannyasi is one who has killed the frightened child inside of them. So when I heard that, it was quite surprising for me. Not surprising, but they're pretty strong words. And Swamiji is never casual about which words he chooses. There's a reason for each particular word that's used in any definition. So, in the context of Swamiji's teachings about the completion process, I started to see, okay, why Swamiji said that and how it would apply to me. When you start doing the completion process, you'll see, you'll understand that all of your cognitions, understandings about life, the core cognitions, the ones that basically put you into incompletion, get you into trouble, prevent you from achieving what you want to achieve in life, put you into depression, put you into sadness, make you angry, frustrated, fed up with life. These are core cognitions that developed when you were very young. They were rooted at a very young age and they became patterns in your life. And when you start to identify when these cognitions took birth, when they you actually started to develop these patterns, you'll see that the common emotion of that young child, that young you, is fear. Now how that expresses, how that's communicated, the decisions that come from it may be different from all of, for all of us. And the, uh, the, the next layer of emotions that come after it may be slightly different, slightly different taste or variation of it. But that fear causes us to withdraw, causes us to flare up, causes us to avoid situations, causes, causes us to free, freeze, makes us sad, makes us take a different path than a path we were already going on. Makes us scared in the traditional sense. But fear is like underlying everything. And that fearful child 
if, if he or she is underlying everything, at the, all of these root um, incidents and memories and situations in your life, if that fearful child is calling the shots, is deciding what you do, what you don't do, how you respond, don't respond, then who is con in control of your life, actually? We all put across like we're adults, we are intelligent beings, we are in control of our emotions, we make decisions from clarity and from, we're composed and only sometimes do we um, get off balance. But if you really look in, you look at your life, not even first, looking in is the next step, but if you just look at your life and measure it as per what you wanted and what's actually there, you'll see a gap. We are not where we want to be. And it's true for everyone. There may be some things we're successful in life at, but it's not across the board. And it's frustrating. Or sometimes it's so depressing that we just withdraw. Or sometimes we just ignore it. We never really look at the root of the problem. And when you go through the completion process, you'll see who is behind all this. It's that young, cute, little boy or girl who didn't know anything about life, who was just caught up in some situation and reacted with the best information he or she knew at the time. And that reaction was so strong. That cognition was so strong that it carried with that child in many situations afterwards until adult life itself and it's not been dropped. So then who is running your life? Is it you as you cognize you? I would say for me the answer is no. The answer was this young little girl who was frightful, scared, some very basic situations. It's not like some horror movie or some base, big traumatic thing had to happen to create the situation. But that fear, the fearful cognition, that fearful reaction, whether it's verbalized or whether you show it or not, is actually driving your life. So sannyasi looks in with the, to the, the tool and supportive completion to figure out, like a laser, when this pattern started, get through all the gunk, and what actually was the trigger, and completing that young boy or child, girl. Very compassionately completing. And the, that's what you'll see, the science of completion is so compassionate. It's not just some casual remembering something and then you feel better because you remembered. No, it's not like that. It's very deep. The whole process of looking into the mirror looking at your eyes, which represent the incomplete you, and using the right cognitions and words to complete with that younger you who's in so much pain or fearful trauma, whatever it is. So it's you being compassionate to you. And this is a technique. Swamiji has cognized it for the modern day indiv individual, but it existed also in Meenakshi's time, even the mirror. So understand, it's not just some self-help, life solution type thing. It's a very deep process that gives you results. And as a sannyasi, you are not supposed to carry incompletion. And if you have com incompletion, you're supposed to complete with it. Root it out, figure out why you acted the way you acted, and complete with it to the core so it doesn't happen again. Now, we'll all have seven or eight, Swamiji says, root patterns that are very strong. So they keep coming back and coming back. But you'll see when you do the completion process, the effect those root patterns have on you is much less when you do the completion process. Or your time to rebound after going through something that was triggered by uh, uh, one of those root patterns is also very less. And this comes with your growing awareness about who you really are, who you want to be, 
and your disassociation with that young you and understanding that it's a choice whether you let that frightened child run your life or you let the complete you run your life. There is a complete you inside of you. But it's being able to distinguish the two and complete the young child and say, thank you, but enough is enough. You don't need to suffer anymore. What you're cognizing is not correct. I'm using big words, but you should actually use words that speak into the listening of that young child. How you would have, what you would have listened to when you were that age. And it could be some different language, some different words. So, so this was very like eye-opening for me when Swamiji, when I read this um, quote actually, and I understood like, this is the key for having the space of sannyas is if you identify this frightened child in you and you use the completion process to come out of it, then you're rating, aiding the space of sannyas and leading more completion to more completion. So if you're really sincere about going past through all your incompletions, then sannyas is for you because it literally aligns you to this purpose only. See, enlightenment is essentially what? Always being in completion. So if you go to the root, then you're setting the stage. If you go to the root and complete, then you're setting the stage for your higher purpose in life. With Swamiji's grace, it will happen. And you will find your root pattern and come out of it. And if you're interested in sannyas, if you're interested in this life where these are the ideals and these, this is what you focus on. See, we may all be doing different roles, but it doesn't matter what the role is. We're not sitting 24 hours a day meditating and um, you know, being disengaged from life. No, we're quite the opposite group of sannyasis. We are very active in our roles and responsibilities. And that's what Swamiji expects us to be engaged with life, engaged with life. But in that engagement, your incompletions will come up. Now, do you ignore them or do you face them? That's what a sannyasi will face them and make sure that frightened child is healed and completed and move on to greater and better things and achieve your full potential. So if you this is, clicks with you, if it resonates with you, then I highly encourage you to think about sannyas and um, and if you're not thinking about sannyas, I highly encourage you just to do the completion process. Attend the Inner Awakening program. Make completion your priority. It will be the best thing you do for you and your family and everyone around you. It's that powerful. It's really one of Swamiji's gifts to humanity. So thank you so much for allowing me to share. Thank you, Swamiji, for sharing this gift with the world. And if you have any questions, please message me. And thank you so much. And Nityanandam.